All right, after all this talk about retouching and the ethics behind Photoshop and retouching and things like that, um, we are actually going to be practicing some retouching skills, some really, really, really introductory, basic stuff that we can do to make our photos look a little bit more finished, a little bit more successful, and general kind of Photoshop organizing tools, things that alter the appearance of the photos a little bit more than our photo merge project. So we are all gonna be editing the same photo and you will find that on Google Classroom where you have gotten this video. So hopefully you already know where that is. Uh, same way that we've downloaded images before, you're going to click on it. Then you'll click open in a new window and then that will allow you to download it using this arrow here. Let me show you a quick before and after of what we're kind of getting at and this was one of my first tries with photo retouching, so give me a little bit of grace here, but this is a fantastic photo I've taken of my cat Hobbs in his favorite sitting spot, and he loves to have his little shoulder uh, propped up on the armrest there, and it's just really cute, sits like that all the time. I love this photo, but there are so many things about it that I think could be better, and that's what I tried to improve with my retouching. So we are going to turn this into something that looks a little bit more like this. And we'll see if I can get this looking even better now that I'm doing it all over again. Um, but general edits that I wanted to make is I wanted to get rid of the background. I wanted to up the contrast, change some things with his eyes, clean up some things on the couch, and then generally kind of crop the image. So that is what we are going for here. And let's go ahead and get started. So download that image and then open up Photoshop. Once you have Photoshop open, you're going to open the image that you've just downloaded. Go ahead and uh, do what you need to do to meet me in this spot and just kind of follow along from here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're retouching an image is crop it. Make it a little bit better compositionally, right? And you can consider things like symmetry, uh, balance, rule of thirds. All of those are great things to think about when you are cropping an image. Obviously, taking the photo, you want to think about the composition, but cropping it, you're going to be able to enhance that composition even more. And so we're going to start by cropping this image together. We're going to need to unlock it so that we can edit it. And then uh, go ahead and click on the crop tool over here. Now, what you want to make sure you have enabled is the rule of thirds grid. So up here where you see this little grid symbol, make sure you have rule of thirds selected. And that means as soon as I start dragging these edges, I will see that rule of thirds grid and I'll be able to line things up accordingly. So um, general thing for the rule of thirds, we know this, uh, you want your focal point to be on one of these cross sections here. I thought for Hobbes that him along the bottom cross sections would be the most interesting composition, especially if I was able to balance him with some negative space up top. So we're going to have to do a little bit of image merging and finagling to get that to work, but I'm going to go ahead and crop him so that he is on this bottom cross section. I want to try and line it up so that cross section gets around his eyes. And obviously I'm going to have some empty space up here that we're going to try and fix later. Okay, that looks good. I've got his face in the bottom right cross section. I've got this line working for me here at the top of the couch and I'm going to balance it with negative space. So that is how I'm going to crop my image. Go ahead and click enter. Follow along, do exactly what I do with this. You're going to be making the same decisions as me, and then at the end you can edit stuff up if you need to. So now, obviously, I've got this empty space up here that I don't want to be empty, so I'm going to fill it with what I have here. In order to do that, I'm going to need to copy a layer and kind of stretch it out to make this background uh, come in. So we're going to take this layer and I'm going to copy it. Now I'm going to uh, have my select or move tool. On, and I'm going to uh, select this layer and then control T to get to the transformation panel right or you can always click uh, edit and then transform but I like control T we like shortcuts here there's gonna be a lot of those I'm gonna stretch this up to the top and then um, I'm going to stretch it even further down because I want to try and get that couch as far down as possible I'll do the rest of the merging stuff later so now, if I drag this layer below the one on top, you'll see what I'm kind of trying to do here, which is trying to kind of extend that wall above. And we're going to merge these together a little bit better and try and get rid of things like this. So when you have a big spot 
in your uh, photo that you want to get rid of, or maybe like something in the background that you don't want to be there, something that's kind of distracting, like this edge of a couch here. Um, I'm gonna make this layer invisible so that we can see what I'm talking about. Uh, you can fill it with content aware fill. And that basically means that Photoshop is going to look at the area around what you have selected and try and fill that in. So we're gonna lasso tool this edge of the couch up here. And then once you have that selected, you're gonna right click it and then fill content aware fill. The first time I clicked this, it automatically filled it. And then there was some kind of pop up that said, uh, you can actually choose what Photoshop uses to fill your image or whatever. Um, definitely click that because that'll be a little bit more helpful. Um, and I'll walk you through how to do that in a second here. Now, um, down here, there was a little spinny circle thing saying that the image was loading. This is going to be kind of a slow process. Photoshop is trying to understand a lot of things that are going on right now. Um, so whenever you make a change, make sure you wait for that little circle to stop spinning before you do anything else because that'll help you kind of see what change is happening. So this is what the content aware fill is actually doing to my photo right now. It's not quite getting rid of the couch the way I want it to because for some reason Photoshop is looking all the way down here and I don't want it to do that. So all this green area is where Photoshop is looking in order to understand what to fill the space with. I don't want to fill the space with the couch or anything behind Hobbs here. So I'm going to get rid of all that. And before I add anything, let's just let that circle spin and see what happens. All right, that looks a lot better. Actually, I'm pretty pleased with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, okay. And then you can always deselect by clicking Control D or uh, select and then deselect. So now I've got some of my wall filled in. Let's see how it looks with the other layer on top. I think I have pretty much all the distracting stuff gone. Obviously there's this big line here, but we're gonna try and get rid of that. Um, but I think we should be good with how this is working out now. So we know how to merge photos, right? I wanna merge the foreground with the background. So I'm gonna click on that foreground. I'm gonna make a mask. I'm gonna have my brush tool, B. Use brackets to make that bigger. Make sure my opacity is at 100% because I just want to get rid of this giant line here. Make sure my softness is really soft, which it is. The bigger your brush is when you're doing masking, um, the less obvious the blend is going to be. The smaller the brush is, the more you're going to see those individual strokes. So try and keep it big. Try and keep it uh, really soft so that it's nice and easy to get rid of stuff like this. There we go. That line is gone. This is already merging really well. I've got some shadowing happening down here where the cat is adding back in. So I'm going to click X to switch my colors and get rid of that. Cool. So that looks pretty good merged wise. Obviously, there's some funky stuff happening with the corner here. And I actually don't want this couch either. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. But for the most part, I've got my background extended the way I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and merge all of these layers so I can use the clone stamp tool, which I briefly showed you guys when we were merging, but it'll be more important uh, later on. So go ahead and get yourself to this step where you have copied the layer, you filled that area with content aware fill, and then you have masked it to get rid of that line and blend things in better. Do that. Once you have done that, uh, go ahead and select all of these. You can click shift to get all of that selected really quickly. And then we're going to merge our layers. Right click and then merge. Now we have one big layer with um, that background all filled in there. Before I start doing my uh, clone stamp tool, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the couch. Same exact way that we did before with that content aware fill. And I think I'm just gonna focus on the lower half here. I'm not gonna make Photoshop work too hard to get the lamp out of the way. I can just get rid of that with the clone stamp. So we'll worry about that. I already had my lasso tool out and then I realized that um, my ability to get around the edge of this cat is not as good as I want it to be. So actually, instead of using the lasso tool, I'm going to use the quick select tool. So let me go ahead and deselect what I've done so far. Quick select tool. And then this is Photoshop already guessing what I'm trying to select and doing a pretty good job, a better job than I think I could do. Cool. So like I said, I just wanted to focus on the couch. And I don't need that little part of his face. I'm going to hold Alt to turn that into a minus. 
And then I just have that background couch selected. And I'm going to keep transforming my selection. This time I'm actually just going to click transform. That way I can just bring up this bottom and not worry about the top because I have the top where I want it. So we're just going to lift this a little bit. Hopefully that'll help me get some more of his fur involved. Yeah, let's try that. I feel better about that. There's a line down here, but we can get rid of that. Okay, so, okay. And deselect, control D. Go ahead and zoom out and see what we're working with. Looks pretty good. Um, all right, so now I'm going to use that clone stamp tool to uh, fix the rest of what's happening here. I might actually be able to use the spot healing tool too. Let's see how that works. So I'm gonna merge these together. Let's see what my spot healing tool does. This is basically the exact same thing as the content aware filter, but it's kind of more of a brush than making a full selection and then doing something. Yeah, I like what that did. All right, um, this is looking good. I'm enjoying this. Um, let me try and get rid of the rest of that black line there. Like that. Okay. Um, yeah, this looks good. I, I understand it's a little patchy right now, and I get that. And if this was going to be um, a really light background where that would be noticeable, I would, you know, do a little bit more work to try and clean that up as best as I can. Um, but I am planning on making this background really dark, and so I don't think I'm going to notice at the end. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here now that I've done some patching, and I'm going to clean up this line with that clone stamp tool. Yep. So this will help me, you know, be more exact about where I'm trying to fill stuff in, and it'll also help me kind of uh, bring the opacity down so I can keep some of that rough, furry edge there. So I've already got my opacity pretty low, which is good. Softness is very, very soft. Again, you want to keep that size up here because it'll be less noticeable brush strokes with that size higher. You hold the Alt button to decide where you're drawing from. I'm just going to want to draw from right above. And then I'm going to paint in that area of the image down here. And remember, it's very light right now because I have that opacity down because I just am trying to bring it down a bit. Go ahead and bring my target a little closer. All right, that feels better to me. So now I've pretty much gotten rid of the background and we still have a little bit of that texture of his fur. Um, not quite as much as I'd like, but I'm still learning with Photoshop, so we're just going to leave it at that. All right, so go ahead and get yourself to this point using that spot healing tool to get rid of any kind of uh, stuff in the background, and then using the clone stamp tool to get that line pretty exact. Once you've gotten to that point, it's time to actually start editing this image. So we're going to go ahead and add some adjustment layers and fiddle around with some of the balances of things. So starting with an adjustment layer of, uh, let's do like brightness, that's pretty general. So I already said I wanted this to be a uh, darker picture, maybe with some more contrast. So let's bring that brightness down a little bit and bring that contrast up. I want those shadows to be a little bit more extreme. And then how about saturation? Sure. Looking pretty orange right now. Maybe bring that saturation down a little bit. Mm, let's do a levels. So levels is a good way to edit shadows and highlights a little bit separately. So depending on which of these triangles you drag, you'll be affecting either the shadows of the image or the highlights of the image or the midtones. And you can kind of fiddle with these to get what you want. So I said I wanted those shadows to be a little bit more intense. That feels good. All right, so I'm pretty happy with those adjustments that I've done 
so far. And if you always want to, if you ever want to like see what you're doing with your adjustments, you can change those eyeballs. So if I take away those adjustments I just did, that's what I had before. So I, I like what these have done to change my photos so far. All right. So I mentioned before that I wanted that background to be completely black. So we are going to add another layer that's going to be a solid color of black. Um, and then we will kind of uh, edit it from there. So I'm going to go ahead and add an adjustment layer and it's going to be a solid color. And I'm going to click black. Now, obviously, this is just a total black square. But if I bring that opacity down, we'll be able to see through it a little bit. So how dark do I want this background? Pretty dark. I want it to be um, rather extreme. I want it to be very dramatic, right? Um, and I can kind of fade that in as we're working with it as well um, because it already has a layer mask. So let's go ahead and get rid of that black square wherever I want to see Hobbs. So make sure I'm on black. Brush is big, opacity is 100, and let's mask that layer away. And I can even paint it back in too. So if I want some of those uh, shadows like in the couch to be a little darker, I can paint uh, back in that black color to help me out there. All right, let me make sure I get all of him. Let's see what it looks like if I want to paint those shadows a little darker. I think I would have to change my opacity a bit, so make that less extreme. Let's try that. Okay, so remember what I said before, the bigger your brush is, the less you're going to notice like little brush strokes and stuff. So in order to fade this back in, I'm going to have a really big brush. Um, what am I on right now? I'm on takeaway. I'm at opacity 15%. Let's start away at like 70%. And I'm going to switch back to add back in. Okay. I feel pretty good about that. So now I have kind of more of a dark and dramatic background and if I want to kind of up that drama real quick here I can uh, change the opacity right and see what that looks like now that I have my mask all figured out all right now with Photoshop you don't want to be constantly adding a bunch of stuff to the same layer and you also don't want to be um, constantly copying and pasting layers this is kind of confusing and it's taking me a little while to fully wrap my head around it uh, but basically, when you want to continue adding and kind of uh, uh, taking out parts and editing certain areas of a photo, it helps to kind of copy what you have so far into a new layer. That way, um, you're only working with that solid photo and you don't have to work with kind of all of these layers that you've already done. So I'm going to add an empty layer. And what I'm going to do is basically stamp what is currently visible on my screen into that layer. It kind of just like takes a screenshot of that photo and all of the edits that we have on it so far, puts them in a new layer. And now this layer is going to be on front of all that I have so far. So that way I can kind of work in steps. It'll kind of snapshot each different step of this editing process. And it will also allow me to more easily go back through my mind if I need to make a change on something and kind of reorganize stuff. So in order to do this, it's only a shortcut. I can't figure out where it is anywhere else in Photoshop, but it is going to be Shift, Control, Alt, and then the letter E. Okay, so that just snapshotted what I have so far into a new layer. And you can't tell anything, right? But um, it'll kind of show your different steps. So this shows what we've done so far. What I want to do is blur the background a little bit just to give it even more of that kind of dramatic portrait -y effect. So I'm going to actually blur the entire thing by uh, clicking filter and then blur. And then let's do a Gaussian blur. Those are very dramatic. Uh, change that pixels to whatever you think. Obviously, the more pixels you have it blurred, uh, the bigger the blur is going to be. Let's do like a seven for me. That's going to blur the entire image. But remember, 
underneath this image is the exact same thing that we've done before. So if I mask it and get rid of the blur on the cat, you will see what we have underneath. Make sure my opacity is up. Kind of like your own portrait mode, you know, DIY. And I'll go ahead and keep kind of the back of him blurred as well. That way I can fade it in a little bit easier. All right, that looks good to me. Good, so now I've got a little bit of blur happening in the background, making this just a little bit more dramatic. Okay, so another thing you can do uh, to clean up a portrait is a spot heal, uh, which is what we did for that wall in the background, but on a smaller scale, it helps for any sort of like blemishes or freckles on the skin or wrinkles that you're trying to get rid of. Um, it basically just takes the area around what you're selecting and kind of just squeezes it in to kind of cover up whatever it is you're selecting. Now, I would like to get rid of some of the fur that's on my couch because I don't think that looks very good. So we're going to let that spot heal. Keep that hardness down. All right, so in order to do this, I'm going to need to do uh, that new layer again and screenshot everything that we have so far. Uh, that way it'll be kind of one image and I can use that one image to then heal in any spots that I see. So new layer, shift, control, alt, E. Okay, now we have my spot healing tool um, and I've already changed those brush stuff. So let's go ahead and draw over some of these furs and let the couch kind of fill it in. Remember the bigger your brush is, the less obvious those brush strokes are going to be. And just a quick note for those of you guys who are using the Wacom tablets, uh, a lot of them have pressure sensitivity. So the harder you press, the bigger uh, that brush stroke becomes. And you can kind of use that to your advantage uh, as you're kind of determining how big. So if I press a little bit harder, I can expand that. All right, so just get rid of some of that cat fur. And that looks pretty good. So, and again, really nice for cleaning up skin, making skin look really smooth, um, as well as any kind of stray hairs that might be in the way or um, dust on a shirt or a wrinkle that you don't want there. It's kind of, uh, that's the best tool to get rid of those things. All right, another thing I would like to edit about this photo is Hobbs's eyes. I think they are absolutely beautiful, but I've always wondered what they would look like green. So I want to make them green and kind of change that up because his eyes are really like the same color of his fur. And I always thought that was a little bit weird. Um, so we're already on this new layer here. I'm going to just select his eyes using that lasso tool. And I can be pretty wide with this because we're going to do um, that layer mask again to blend it into the rest of the face. But just want to edit his eyes here. I have this selected. I can right click and do layer via copy. That'll put it right on top. And then I'm just going to edit this layer in terms of um, changing those colors. So remember, back from our photo merge project, when you add a um, adjustment layer, which we're going to do color balance for this one, when you add an adjustment layer, it automatically applies to every single layer below. So if I start changing my colors now, it's going to change it for the whole image, and I don't want that. So in order to have it only affect the layer directly below it, you, you hold the Alt button, and then you mouse over that line in between the adjustment layer and the layer you're trying to edit. Click, that arrow will pop up here, and that way it will only affect that direct layer below it. So now I can play with his eyes. Like I said, I want to see what they look like green. So I'm going to up that green color. I'm actually finding it kind of hard to see it with this whole like mask thing happening. So I'm going to go ahead and um, blend that into the layer below it. So remember to go here and then layer mask, brush tool, opacity. That way it'll be a little less distracting. I can clean that up a little bit more. All right, back to this. Okay, those look pretty green. I might actually be losing some of this here from my mask. Yeah, I am. I like that. 
I'm also going to add some uh, brightness and contrast. Again, hold Alt. Just want it on the layer below. I'm actually going to make them a little darker because I think that'll help them look more realistic. Okay, that looks good to me. So let me edit up this mask a little bit better here uh, to blend this in with the rest of the face. that's fun i think um maybe they're a little bit too bright he's giving me a tiny bit of a zombie effect here so let's make this a little darker that looks a little more natural love it i like how it looks with green eyes i think it's fun okay let's add another adjustment layer i'm thinking that he still feels a little too yellow, so I'd like to adjust those colors on him and kind of the whole photo in general. So I'm not just going to apply it to him, I'm going to apply it everywhere. And let's bring up the blue a little bit more, see if that offsets that yellowiness. And what you can do with this is you can go a little overboard and then change that opacity and see if you like how that looks. So I'm going to go a little overboard with the color here. And then I'm going to take this layer and turn the opacity down. That way it's just a little bit of color adjustment. I like that. That feels more merged to me. And you can always, you know, see what you're actually doing. I like thinking that. I like that better. It feels less green. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to do is um, just edit Hobbs himself and kind of up his contrast a little bit more because this couch feels very dramatic and the background feels very dramatic, but he doesn't quite have as much shadow on him as I want him to. So we're going to do that new layer, Control, Shift, Alt, E. Okay, then I just want to select Hobbs. So I'm going to do that quick select tool and let Photoshop figure that out for me. looks pretty good. I'm going to make a new layer from this selection. Cool. Now I just have Hobbs on my next layer and so I can just edit the stuff with him without having to worry about changing the background at all. And I'm going to edit his levels because that'll help me adjust just shadows. So levels, make sure it's applying just to his layer, alt, Okay, let's see what I can do. I like those deeper shadows there. Yeah, that feels good. Obviously he turned orange, so we're gonna edit his saturation color balance as well. I think that feels a little bit more dramatic. Let's see. Yeah, we definitely have some deeper shadows going on there. I like that. Now I think it's getting a bit of a line around my selection. Those edges quite aren't quite as feathered as I want them to be, so I can do a mask. And let's see if I can get that feathered a little bit more. That looks better. Okay, so that's it. That's all the retouching that I want to do on this project. And that's all that I wanted to show you guys. Now at this point, when you have your photo retouched, um, obviously you've done along with this demo with me, which is great. You can actually get started on your real project, take your photo and start retouching that. Once you have your photo completely retouched, you will have to add some kind of digital drawing or illustration on top of it. So you could do that in Photoshop or you could do it in Illustrator. It all really depends on what you found yourself more comfortable with. I personally prefer Illustrator. I think the way that the layers are set up just makes a little bit more sense in my mind. If it doesn't for you, that's perfectly fine. If you want to add your drawing layer in Photoshop, then you definitely want to get rid of all of these layers kind of like, you know, clogging up your layer panel there. So remember, you can select the first layer, go all the way down, hold shift, select the last layer that will select everything. And then you can create a group from the layers. And that will put them all in a folder, which can then be expanded or subtracted. So if you are doing your drawing in Photoshop, definitely do that. And then you will also want to lock that group by clicking this lock button. And that way, when you add a new layer, 
to create some drawings on top of your image, you're not going to be touching anything down there or select anything by accident or changing anything from that. So when you want to do that, uh, obviously you can go to your layer, you can go to a brush tool, so then you can just kind of draw on top. Right? And um, you can also erase. Photoshop also has a smoothing tool here. So when you're on the brush tool, you can make it smooth for you, which I'm covering it up here, but it's basically you just kind of choose from 0 to 100%. So I'll have it smooth like 50% for me. And what that'll do is it won't track every single movement of your pen. It'll kind of imagine where that line is supposed to go, therefore making your lines a little bit straighter also might feel kind of weird to use it first. You kind of have to be more exaggerated, maybe a little slower. Yeah, a little slower works. You can also use the paint bucket tool. Okay, so we should know how the paint bucket tool works. We used it for our animation stuff, so you can definitely use that. Now, if you are working in Photoshop, do not forget to continuously add new layers when you're adding new parts of your drawing. The more layers you have, the more easy it's going to be to um, edit certain things, affect certain things, delete certain things, all of that. Um, Illustrator does that for you, which I think is why I prefer Illustrator's layer setup. Uh, Photoshop, you just have to keep reminding yourself to click new layers uh, when you're adding new parts of your drawing. That way it's easier to kind of edit and move stuff around. So like if I wanted to uh, draw a heart in this layer, layer seven, But then let's say like I wanted to move it without moving the rest of all of this stuff. I can take my layer seven, lock my layer six so I don't touch it, and move just the heart without moving anything else. So that's it's very important to uh, have your layers separated so that you're able to do that. Otherwise, like if I have just this layer selected, I'm going to be moving everything, right? Okay. If you want to do your drawing in Photoshop, you can. If not, then you're just going to export your edited image here, and then uh, open it up in Illustrator and work on top of it like that. So that's all I need to show you guys for this demonstration. Uh, hopefully this made sense to you guys. And at this point, you should be ready to uh, do your own project photo and add your digital illustration and drawing on top of that. And then we will be good to go. Cool.